Good evening, Free Enterprise fans. Welcome to this Eblin Elixir League Moonvale Mixer match between Bursic Badger of We Wear Shorts in Winter and Wind Fox of Cocoa Shop Quartet. My name is Brickhouse. I'm joined in the commentating booth tonight by John Burkhead. Dathis is on Restream, and Sheep Launcher is our tracker. John, how are you doing tonight? I am with the commentator with the greatest name that there ever was, so how could I be anything but happy right now? Actually, you know, it's 1226, and I have to be up in five hours for work, so maybe I'm a little fatigued and questioning my life choices. But as one Mr. Elvin Sorrow in chat has pointed out, we have a Sid hero, and while uh, Mr. Sorrow and I do not agree on everything, we do agree personally that, uh, maybe not objectively, but that Sid hero is, in fact, the best hero. What are your thoughts about that? Well, considering we're starting late and you want to have a good momentum to start, I am really happy to see Sid. More importantly, I love our icon in the middle with the art hero with that Mega Man skin. I'm not seeing it in the game, so I'm a little bit disappointed with that. Yeah, do you it looks have like, a favorite Sid skin? Uh, I, do, I do enjoy that one. That particular face looks like either I haven't had enough fiber, can't go to the bathroom, or, oh man, am I really falling down this hole and I'm going to blow it up? Whoops, well, I guess, well, anyway. Uh, so, as uh, we wait for me to get booted off of comms within 45 seconds as a personal record, let's go ahead and take a look at our objectives. We have our stock four. Uh, we have the Football Gauntlet and Golpez, uh, a throwback to uh, some as uh, well as, oh, you know what? Let's not. Let's just go. Let's let's just go. Let's see what we start with here. All right. Sid is met with. Oof. Oh, that's so wonderful. It is. Oh, that that uh, that Earth Crystal is pretty wonderful, though. Yes, the with the with the party rock as it's known, we have a chance to to look pretty early and and get some new friends and maybe kick off our new old friend, Edward. Indeed. So, a few things worth of note that I'm sure most people in here already know, but it can't have it can't hurt to go ahead and have a refresher. We are on T Wildish, which is probably uh, arguably the most generous of treasure settings. However. As all loot has tiers attached to it, we have set a max at tier five. So normally when we go ahead and rate that treasury, we can go ahead and get some real goodies. That's gonna be a little bit harder to do. Both of our runners are heading toward Baron and we're gonna get some information about who is in the Baron Inn. So we're waiting very patiently at our guests. It looks like we have a forum having a, a nice dinner with some guards. So that'll be that'll be something to look at later from a white mage standpoint. We can see that it looks like Wind Fox is doing a little bit of inventory management now, getting things all set and characters organized a bit. Uh, yep, uh, we do have some early Ether twos and tents for sale. Uh, you do start with some camping gear, but not a ton. Uh, even though we're only starting with a hand axe for Sid. Uh, as a throwback to the Lolly Ho flags from a couple of years ago, there is a dwarf axe included. Uh, so uh, Sid will go ahead and have a, a pretty powerful weapon right away, even if it does slow him down. Meanwhile, Wind Fox is getting a look at the Demon Mist as Bursic Badger is heading to see that treasury. And it looks like it's just a Dark Elf, so he will stay there and be pretty bored, as I don't think we're going to go visit him <laughs> much again. So yeah. Bursic is taking a look at the, the, the treasury now. Soon, maybe. All right. Well, a few more, a uh, few more minutes before we do that. Uh, Wind Fox looks to be going through Mist, and we've got Dragoon Shields for sale and the Karate Chest. That's not too bad. Yeah, Karate Gi is good. Nice uh, plus five attack uh, or plus three, maybe. I forget which one it is. Um, uh, but we see that we have one in the public treasury, and uh, we're about to go ahead and get a very early rate of the gated treasury. Let's see what goodies we find here. Dragoon Whip or Dragon Whip, Leviathan. All right. And we've got a Rydia set there between the Dragon Whip, Leviathan, and uh, Charm Rod. Two Poison Axes. That's a very powerful weapon for Sid. The accuracy of the Poison Axe is a little suspect, but as long as Sid stays into the center slot, we should be in pretty good shape. Uh, decent amount of money. Uh, worth noting, Wind Fox did find an Elven Bow for sale. Uh, Sid can use bow and arrows as well as, um, as axes and hammers. So that might be a good pickup at some point. So staying true to the limit on treasure, it's a rather moderate treasury. I'd love to see what chat says about that. I see 
Frankie Bones there saying five out of 10, which is, I guess, what we can really expect with this flag set. Yeah, tier five out of 10, that's pretty funny. Uh, the Boreas in there was pretty nice. Um, uh, J items in general are, are nice to have as we're taking a, a look at, uh, I believe this is the uh, Coco shop here, or uh, the Kaipo, excuse me. I would have bought that, uh, oh no, we're over in, in Terraria. I would probably bought that, that boomerang. Uh, it's not very expensive and you can go ahead and uh, should you come across an edge, you can back row him right away. Uh, those silk webs are very nice. Maybe not as relevant as it might be with a faster hero. Sid will be determining our agility and Sid never really gets all that fast. Uh, we have found cabins. That's great. Heal pots are always a really nice spec buy as well. You can come across a valve that's particularly rude, or uh, maybe you're doing some looting over in Sylph, or maybe you get breath. Uh, heal pots are always nice to have. And those meat bells are handy for uh, Baron guards in a rude spot, or maybe you're going to go ahead and do a warlock grind on the moon. Absolutely. So Wind Fox is about to check out the waterfall cave, and we'll see what we have here momentarily. That's All right, speaking of those guards you mentioned, or is actually that's Vigan, that's Vigan, that blonde yeah. hair. So and by blonde hair was in the cave. Yeah, that's uh that's no good. So Wind Fox has all of the free boss information and will more than likely be headed over to Mount Hobbs, uh, which is where Bursic Badger is. So we had some early divergence in terms of loot, but we are all going ahead and meeting up and we're gonna find out who our free character that is well not free character because we have to do the fight, but a non-gated character check that we can do right now. Yeah, and Sid should make short work of that, hopefully, especially with the gear that we have. But it is a lunar sparkle and a young. Yep, so right now, power not exactly overwhelming. We did see claws for sale, as I hope chat gets their uh, their dudes ready to go over there. Um, again, another um, another boss here. You're happy to kind of see uh, uh, off the table. This one can punch a little hard uh, for sure. Um, I would like to see on Windfox's side, I would like to see that Sid back road. The dwarf axe can go ahead and back row. And if both of our uh, characters have access to uh, the Poison Axe, at the moment, that is the strongest uh, weapon available. You can see on Bursic's side doing 948 damage. As we said earlier, the, the main drawback of the Poison Axe is that the accuracy is rough, but characters that are in the center slot, both for melee as well as magic attacks, get a nice little boost. And even though Bursic got into the fight second, you see that he is in fact done first. It'll good to be uh, good to have Yang to start a little bit. He doesn't usually become powerful until later, but he'll have some good health that'll maybe help him get through a, a tough spot later if if need be. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Should we come across a hook route, uh, both Sid and Yang, uh, especially with some levels, will get quite a bit of HP, and that can be a really nice buffer to go ahead and get through the hook routes. That's an excellent point. Bursic picked up a Stardust, so we now have a Stardust and a Boreas, and I believe we had one other J item um, in the starting kit, so that's going to be very helpful. Also note in that starting kit, as we see Yang starts with the Nice Claw, but we're going to put on those Poison Claws for plus three uh, strength each, um, is there was one Hourglass one. Uh, Yang is often referred to as a Punch Mage because uh, mages grow powerful with levels as they get more powerful spells. Yang gets more powerful levels simply uh, because his strength goes up. So especially if this is a hook route, we might see ourselves diving into um, uh, Castle Evelyn for levels and for loot. Uh, speaking of loot, when Fox finds a nice black belt. And um, that hourglass can come into effect. The person is heading now, now into the antline cave. We're going to see what that boss is there momentarily. He's got all he's got to sit in the back row. And so he looks to be pretty well set up to take this fight. Yep, only a thousand uh, total HP here, which means each one of these uh, dimps is going to have 333.3 bar over it. I'm not tired. This is fine. I count to four for a living. That was math. Bam. Uh, but one thing uh, worth to note, we saw that we have uh, Kaipo guards at the Baron 1 spot. Here we see dimps at Antlion. Uh, this is no longer Potion Party. These free bosses are, in fact, free bosses. So should you find Dimps in a rude spot during Potion Party, they're brutal. But here, as you move on and we have uh, shops that have J-items, such as Hourglasses and Coffins, you might want to see a boss like this later on. So those are two pretty easy free bosses and two pretty easy free spots. So that might spell some trouble for our runners later on. And speaking of hook root, Bursic Badger picks up a hook. So that is one possible way to go underground. 
it is. It could be our intended access, or it could not. We still have options. Uh, we still have Baron in. We still have Zot. We still have full defense, and we still have Baron in. Not to mention the fact that we could have some chaining uh, items from those particular checks. So, uh, as you said very clearly, it's not necessarily a hooker up right away. It is necessarily a gated character check. So it could be a Cecil, it could be a Fu, or it could be uh, somebody else. How do you feel about diving the hook route this early with this party, but you don't have exit to go ahead and get out of there easily? I, I think it depends on what I find in the other spots. I, I was burned on a seed recently playing casually where I didn't dive and I was playing against a friend of mine and he got edge and I was struggling without him. I think right now their party does have enough power with Sid to get through the early game. But if you have any kind of resistance or feel you're grinding against something, personally, I would dive. I'm I'm inclined to agree. Um, I we know that there's a porm in uh, Baron Inn, the gated shops, and that's what the hook uh, route uh, offers up as our runners are kind of crisscrossing here. Um, in Cave Eblin, you have a gated shop, so you can get some tier five items, something like heroin rope, something like a Sammy bow. Maybe we get Bacchus wine. Maybe we get sirens. So going down there in the first place is nice. Some of the loot down there is very good. And maybe in uh, that item shop, you might go ahead and come across something as we get a free box wine for Bursic. Um, we might come across uh, some J items to help us with Cave Eblin to go ahead and get Blink and Berserk on that Porum. So um, while Sid is great early game, you know, without a spoon and without a lot of levels, there's really not a lot of power here at all. And I don't think a lot of runners are going to look at Porum and go, oh, good, we're saved. There's the DPS that I need. So I think we are uh, more likely than not going to go ahead and check out that character. And I do believe that's where Bursic is headed now. And Bursic has brought the hovercraft over, going the little cheeky route, because you don't have to put the hovercraft all the way to the right. You can go in part way. Uh, what's neat about Cave Eblin here is that there there is one trap chest. And so you're going to have some nice treasure around there. And it looks like Bursic is battling the inventory boss, who is a notorious boss who gives all runners a hard time. Uh, but once you identify that trap chest, even if you don't want to fight the monsters in there, you can loot all the rest of them and be just fine. And the loot you get is pretty good. You, even, uh, I, I agree. Uh, the, the one chest here is probably, in my opinion, the worst trap chest in the game. It is deceptively difficult because in the vanilla game, this particular cave happens uh, a little bit um, uh, later on, whereas early as uh, in Free Enterprise, you can get there pretty early. As we see Sirens, we see Thor Rages, we see Elixirs. Uh, you don't start with Thor Rages, uh, so that would be a very wise pickup for both of our runners when they come across here, should we find a rude turtle somewhere. Um, but those, uh, uh, those stalemen, they punch hard, they put you to sleep if you're not RA1. Um, it's a it's a, a nasty spot. Um, so uh, I'm generally inclined to go ahead and not deal with that too much. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. You you face them much earlier in the free enterprise than you do the vanilla game. Bristic Badger did pick up five sirens and five Thor Rages. Uh, Samurai Bow available as well. So it turns out that the underground shop here in the cave was quite nice. Wind yep. Fox is now hitting to defend Fabul, and we're going to get our first look at what kind of evil monster awaits us there. Yeah, that Sammy bow almost makes Eddie into a real character. Almost. Probably well, let's not. not get ahead of ourselves here. We don't know what a real character is, but there is a real turtle who may be hiding in the shell. Wind Fox has found that Kanazo is now attacking Fabul and is doing his best to keep him away. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I think we have about uh, 18, 1900. And hey, speaking of edges that are vanilla and in the hook route, Brick, you brilliant, beautiful witch. Um, that's a, that's a hey, huge I, I, I've seen it. And that that really is going to give Bursic a huge advantage at this point. Uh, and I think we have some swords for him as well. Maybe not top tier, but enough to to really make up for the lack of power. Uh, I, so you can walk out of here absolutely fine confident in the fact that you made a really really good choice yeah um i'm not terribly big on doing a ton of shopping but if there's something i'm looking to pick up it's probably going to be a mute knife we um and they are available uh, uh possibly in in overworld shops um mute knives do mage damage 
and uh, we might have all noticed there that uh, that is Magus Sisters over in the Ruby spot. So those sisters are splitting 25,200 uh, HP, not evenly, but a Mute Knife will go ahead and do some work to shred through. Edge just starting with a Claw. Uh, Bursic uh, was heads up enough to go ahead and back row so that he didn't forget about it. Um, and we'll see what he decides to do next. Yeah, that's a good thing to, to point out as well with the uh, the C Neki flag on. They don't come with the gear that they normally come with in the vanilla game. So in this case, Edge without a sword, you're all you're left with their claws. And so hopefully he can get something in the shop and he's got some in the inventory to get a little bit more power besides just the boomerang. Yeah. But even uh and you're 100 percent correct. I mean, this, you know, a fire claw boomerang edge is not exactly zero lowest level. Um, but with such a powerful, such an overpowered character in Edge, quite frankly, taking on early bosses that don't line up with the um, uh, with the, the early game and the, and the vanilla game, um, even just flame casts can do uh, quite a bit of work. So between the uh, ability to cast flame, Sid's power, Sid's HP, um, I think it's uh, pretty likely that you'll see a combination of Edge and um, Sid uh, taking over the uh, early game, but some good memory from Bursic. Uh, he must have been here earlier and gotten a good look because those are long swords. That's right, kids at home, take notes. Even if you're not using a, an electronic tracker, get a notepad. You never know when you need to head back and get something. Windfox is now deciding to try to have a, a nice lunch with Porum, but these officers and soldiers got in the way. They did. Uh, it's weird that we have Kaipo guards in the Baron Inn. It seems a little mixed up. It's almost like these things are randomized. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get through here earlier. I'm a little concerned for the second spot because we don't have a ton of damage going out. It's uh, around 4,000 uh, hit points in the second spot. And while the second spot's not terribly fast, neither is this party. Um, but that's not a concern when it's King Queen of Evelyn. Yeah, so they really just have to wait a little bit. They can get through these guys, or if they can destroy the king, the queen will despawn and the battle will end. So hopefully they've got the, the health to go through it. I think Sid with an 800 health left should be just fine. Yeah, there, no one's, I mean, there's there's no way short of doing a kamikaze, you know, uh, that you're gonna go ahead and, and have any problems. Bursic just pulled a curse string uh, anchoring worries are over forever with the seed. Uh, between the cursed ring, honestly, that's enough with Sid, but also with the starting axe that we have, uh, anchoring is no longer going to be a problem. It's become not meta necessarily, but you see a very uh, common strat where uh, runners will go ahead and check the first two chests on Zot, trying to go ahead and pet the doggo. Don't forget, our runners picked up a Boreas early on, so that would have one shot, and you have a chance to get some, some more than tier 5 loot. Um... So Bursic's good for uh, anchoring. That's really going to help for the second fight because uh, that fight can be quite speedy. If you come across a Wyvern, you come across a Golbez, that can be a little problematic. Um, but a very nice pull. And with the edge, uh, Bursic clearly feels strong enough to go ahead and take on these odd bosses. And Wind Fox is rewarded with a Rune Axe. So that's a, I mean, that's a nice item. We know we're going to have to fight the Magus Sisters and that's good. Uh, but I, I think he was hoping for something a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things you're going to find, uh, how about a required gauntlet at Zot 1? Ooh, and those lovely little slimes. You don't, you don't get to see that sprite much, but I really like it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, something I learned a little while ago, the color of the slime actually represents the element that they are weak to, right? So if you see like jellies that are red, they're weak to flame. If you see whatever that are, um, you know, blue, they're weak to ice. You see the creams, I think they are, they're weak to lightning because they look kind of yellowish. Um, so normally it doesn't matter because the HP is so low that you don't have to go ahead and actually find their weakness. Um, but it's just a little fun fact for you. Everyone playing the home. That's a, that's a very interesting fact. Little, little edges that you need to pick up that can, uh, that can help you get through things a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. And speaking of edge getting through things quicker, we get to see the diverse amount of power that Edge has in different areas. Where Flame took out the first fight in the gauntlet, his swords did great on the second. Yep. Uh, Edge, uh, at base level, is able to go ahead and cast four flames. 
Uh, you'll end up with five uh, bosses here on the alt gauntlet as opposed to the six that you have on the traditional uh, uh, gauntlet. Um, I thought maybe we were attacking on the second one to try to preserve the flames. Um, but uh, we seem to be doing some melee attacks. Either way, uh, this party is very, uh, without any real problems, is taking out uh, these bosses. I wouldn't have, my, I would have kind of preferred to take Porum with me here. Uh, both our runners have that knowledge that she's there. Uh, Porum very often is referred to as, as the lesser white mage because of her HP totals and it takes forever to learn here for. Um, as we see Flamecast go out here now. But she does learn Blink, Berserk, and, ex and Exit pretty quickly. Um, and here's a real opportunity where she could have gotten some serious levels. The Wind Fox is heading up Mount Ordeals now, and it looks like we have an Octo Mammoth hanging out on the first part of the bridge, somehow swimming in the rocks on the mountain, but it's late. Don't worry about it. He's fine. Uh, yeah, you can't, you can't unsee it. Um, my already bro, Frankie Bones, pointing out in chat uh, that uh, Edge did, or the Edge, that uh, we did pick up an Earth Hammer for that Sid. Uh, that's a very nice uh, pickup for him. Um, hopefully that'll prompt Windfox to go ahead and take off the Hand Axe, because uh, it's not really uh, doing all that many favors. Uh, this first spot in Ordeals is the weakest physical attack spot of the game, and Octomam only does physical attacks. So if you were going to come across Octomam, this is a very good spot to do that. And Bursic Badger has completed his first objective in defeating the Fabul Gauntlet. Yep, we're going to get uh, a good look at two more uh, gated character spots. You will come across a total of one dupe. Uh, everyone else is uh, essentially uh, guaranteed to show up to appear. So this could be a Rosa, this could be a Fu, this could be a Cecil, uh, this could be a second Edward. Uh, there are things. Uh, speaking of things that exist with an all melee party, that is a blinking wyvern. That is absolutely disgusting and gross. Um, also, that tells us that we are not going to get our guarantee, our seed intended underworld access. We already have a hook. It's very possible to hook route. And maybe we might even find a magma key here, but that's not what the game intends. Oh, blink and you'll miss it. Just like it, uh, just like you expect. On Bursic's side, the party rock has yielded a Rosa and a Tella. So Bursic's going to have some choices now on who to pick up. Uh, John, who would you pick up in this case, or who would you leave behind? I, I would always leave behind Eddie. I, I, I mean, did I just do a, a tournament race where I, I had Adam Spoodward and we just used it the whole time? Yes. Am I still always and forever inclined to go ahead and get rid of Eddie? Absolutely. Uh, I love having Tell here. Um, uh, Blink, uh, uh, as uh, Funnel Cakes would say, Blink is the best uh, heal that you can possibly get. Um, and even though Tella hasn't done ordeals on Bursic's side, and he'll find the fun that Windfox is having right now, um, uh, Tella starts with Blink. So, uh, with the melee party, uh, it's a great way to go ahead and assist, you know, that Edge, which is quite strong for the early game, that Sid, which is quite strong for the early game. Uh, so the decisions that Bursic made are absolutely the ones that I would have made as well. Yeah, I'm sad to see Edward go, and I'm sure Chad is as well. So if you're an Edward supporter in chat, let's uh, let's give him some love. But I absolutely agree that the utility of Tella and having Rosa as a wonderful white mage is just too much to to give up. Uh, yep. So uh, one fox is going to take another stab at it. Unfortunately, did not save after the Aquaman fight, so we'll have to go ahead and do that again. Maybe we'll see some adjustments with things like battle speed, maybe using some of those uh, J items. Uh, Bursic went for a recall. I like it. Uh, recalled stone, which could be great, just not against this particular boss. You do start with some star veils. There is 6,000 HP on this Bahamut, um, but it looks like we're trying to go ahead and get through the damage. It'll be close. Um, I wonder if we're going to go ahead and put up a safety veil at some point. The magic power is quite high at this spot, so even just reflecting one, um, uh, one Mega Flare will go ahead and take a Bahamut, especially with all the damage that they've done. This is getting a little scary for me personally, and we, oh, 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 oh baby, calculated. Uh, nicely done by Bursic's side, uh, and we are through the Tower of Zod. We have an objective done with the gauntlet. We're gonna get a key item check, 
Um, some probably some pretty nice routing. Well, I imagine we'll probably see some Baron in next because we're going to end up right there. Uh, a really strong start for Bursic. And Wind Fox is through Octo Mammoth for the second time. I'm hopefully we'll see a safety save. I know uh, some some may poo poo that. Uh, however, I'm a huge fan of it because you just never know what can happen. Mm -hmm. Well, so we got some re-equipping, putting on some stronger arrows on Eddie. Um, I personally would like to see some of the J items that don't get reflected go off here. Have Sid use that firebomb, which is HP base, as we see a tower key for Bursic. No keyless tower for him today. Uh, use that Stardust. If it's early in the fight, maybe use that Boreas. Use those J items that are going to get the guaranteed uh, attack to go through here. And it, it can be tempting to, to hold on to those because, like, you know, the consumable meme goes in JRPGs. Oh, don't use it. You might need it later. Well, it really isn't helpful later. When you're in these early fights and you're trying to get over the hump to get that power, it's absolutely imperative to use those J items. Ah. Bursic is now heading to Baron Inn. I'm going to go have another sit down coffee with probably Porum. Um, and we'll we'll see how that goes. The soldiers are going down pretty quickly. Uh, Wind Fox is still fighting Wyvern. And we'll see if this is going to work out a little bit better than last time. Uh, yep. Unfortunately, um, Wind Fox did have Porum um, use the firebomb. Uh, a firebomb is a HP based um, attack. So by having Porum use it, as opposed to somebody like a Sith, they didn't quite get the full damage off of it. Um, while we are crisscrossing our runners, and as we're going to watch Wind Fox go ahead and make these adjustments, and I do believe uh, that he will go ahead and get through this Wyvern. Elvin Sorrow has submitted 75,000 points to go ahead and get a shout out from both me and you, Brick. How about that? Well, Elvin Sorrow, I appreciate you redeeming all those points. As you can see here, we have a rune axe in Elvin Sorrow. Do you like rune axes? Well, Elvin Sorrow does, in fact, uh, like Sid. Uh, I can uh, tell you for a fact that he's a wonderful runner with a, uh, an incredible stream. Um, he is one of my dearest friends in the community. Um, he is hilarious. He is handsome, talented, and just a very, 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 uh, just a kind of person you want in any kind of community. So if you are not already following Mr. Elton Saro, please make sure that you do so. Uh, he's great. And thank you for submitting the points for your, uh, uh, for your, uh, your shout out, bud. Bursig is taking a look now in the Mysidia shop. See if we have anything here. Oh, an Earth Hammer for sale. That's useful if you don't have it. So the Earth Hammer is kind of neat too, because you have a mini quake if you use it as an item, where if you didn't have edge and needed some early sweeping ability, that can be a huge help. And speaking of sweeping, Wind Fox has put that Wyvern in its place and is finally, after much consternation, able to pass that boss. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a really trolly spot first of all um because with the back attack it's going to get its attack off first um and when you're going to go to the spot early like blank is just i, I mean it's funny for me because i'm not the one <laughs> that's dealing with it that's uh some phenomenal phenomenal trolling uh for that wyvern part so that had to feel pretty good for uh wind fox um Tellas are going to be online, so if and when Windfox completes uh, the Tower of Zot, that tell will have all the things. Uh, Bursic uh, is going to look at those vampires. Uh, we're going to, oh no, I'm buying those kamikazes. All right, well, Cave Magnus is an objective. That might be a quick way to go ahead and uh, and uh, get onto the music quickly. But Windfox finds, speaking of, uh, we have a probably pre. Oh, that is a hard required ordeals because look who we have here ha 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 oh well um you know for uh, for an ordeals that started so easy um where you have um you know octomam in, in a very weak spot wyvern and the golbez that's kind of gross it's uh it's not great um, the magic power here is quite low. I don't foresee any real problems. Um, we saw that he tried to go ahead and get a Star Veil off. Even if he used it, I don't think one, you'd need it, and two, it's not going to stay on very long anyway. When you're by yourself, the ticks go by extremely quickly. Um, well, this is gross. Required, but gross. Well, the good news is you don't have to worry about setting up your party because you only have one character. 
Golbez usually leaves you with two characters, or in this case, since you have one, you just get to continue on. So we'll see if that virus does much of anything here. And with a thousand health on Sid, it is, a, as you said, a complete non-issue. Cool. And a few chops should make Golbez into a, uh, a fine paste to be remembered and not forgotten. A fine paste. I like that. I'm going to steal that. Oh, and he asked, why? Why? Well, because <laughs> I want to leave here with the twin harp and you're not letting me. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Uh, Bursic also tried to do a recall, and uh, that's uh, another. Wait, did he do a recall? Didn't Bursic finish Zot? Did he cast uh, Stone on purpose? Huh. That's hmm. interesting. Oh. I, I like to believe it was a reference to the Octomammoth being inside the stone. I was oh. figuring maybe if he returns him to his natural state as a statue, that he'll he'll let him go by, and the Octomammoth will truly be free. Okay, there it is. Well, uh, Bursig did not save and has the good news uh, uh, of this. However, he's got some serious firepower here. Uh, we have a Tela that is uh, online. Uh, so that means that Tela knows Berserk, uh, which means you can get a, a whole bunch of attacks off. We have five characters. We have more DPS. Um, we are uh, in very good shape. No, we're, uh, we're still recalling spells. Um, I'm going with a kick. That might have been a bit, a bit of a mismenu. Uh, Tella is helping. Wind Fox is done. Uh, we're going to see if they're going to chase that harp. Uh, sometimes going from harp into Zot is a nice little bit of smooth routing. And uh, while we don't have a ton of DPS, that might be where we're going. Uh, some shopping first. Uh, I wonder if Wind Fox is making an active decision to go ahead and fade the hook character, or if he just feels good about what he has. Yeah, and I think that what you're seeing here is some of the differences between going for an early party build and then trying to use your, your skills as a runner to overcome the objectives. You're going to have to invest a little more time in getting those additional characters, but if you do it early enough, it's going to pay dividends over the course of the race, and I think that's where we're seeing some of the difference here uh, between the runners. Yeah, um, you know, when you get something, when you get a, a significant power uh, spike, right, whether it's a crystal sword on a Cecil, an adamant party, an adamant armor on a party, a spoon on an Eddie, or in this case, uh, you know, an edge in a party that's not completely starved for uh, attack power, because again, Sid in the early game is quite good. Um, but with Sid being the hero, uh, he's never going to get any faster than RA5, um, and his power will start to fade. The earlier that you get such a, a spike like this, um, it almost feels like almost exp exponential, you know, like the the more that time goes on uh, where the disparity of the party composition continues, the more the advantage is going to grow. But that being said, uh, Wind Fox is on his way to go ahead and complete a second objective. So grabbing the Black Chocobo now, the, the only time you have to really use them in the game to fly over to Cave Magnus. So hopefully in a few minutes, we'll have some beautiful music to hear, courtesy of our, our wonderful bard friend. And Bursic is now going through Golbez. And while we end this little time for intermission, just want to give a, a shout out to Dathis on the restream and Sheep Launcher being tracker. Uh, thank you both very much for, for doing that. Yeah. Is this your uh, first time doing comps? It is, it is. I'm, I'm very excited to, to be here and to, to watch this race. Um, so hopefully, are you looking to kick me off? Have Absolutely I said anything not. offensive yet? Uh, no, no. Uh, first of all, I want to compliment you because you're doing a fantastic job. I am thoroughly enjoying the banter. And I, I just, since you're new, I just want to let you know that uh, there's been a new tradition that while the music is going on, we talk as much as we possibly can. See, I even got these buttons, right? And this little, and this right and this let me see we don't we don't let the chat um listen to the music we just keep talking buddy okay oh that, that's wonderful hang on let me read um let me read a chart so i put a whole bunch of bosses here in order mm -hmm. um that we could look at um, so i'm going to start off with um yeah so we have the demist which is the the dragon or right. the kaibo officer and soldier mm. we have the octo mammoth mm -hmm. and then the ant lion and then actually around that we have mom bomb which is mm -hmm. if you remember in the vanilla game and even in free enterprise when you when you fight him oh no he blows up into a whole bunch of bombs if you oh, two don't like behave that, i'm gonna globally mute you 
Oh, we're, we're... oh. Did, did I did I get a mix up? Are we not supposed uh, to? I, I, I thought. thought. But it's they, after they 1 can hear me yell at you guys too, so hush your faces. I, but I, but I, I, I thought this was America, but you're Canadian. I think we're allowed to talk again. Isn't that so generous? It really is. And, and I even get through like a quarter of my list. So that that's I really know. disappointing. I, if you two are going to behave, I will let you keep talking. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, a lot happened there. First of all, that's a rat tail. So we'll probably turn that in pretty quickly. Uh, Bursic got some really good information. Uh, that Those Kaipo shops were nice. Not only did we find the mute knife we were talking about earlier for Edge. So between the... Um, Runax uh, that Bursic will eventually get from Baron Inn, as well as that Mute Knife for Edge. Uh, those Maga sisters are in deep, deep, deep trouble. Uh, we also found one Bacchus wine uh, readily available um, that was gotten for free somewhere, and there's the possibility of more Bacchus wine being stolen from the Mad Ogre chest. Uh, so Mute Knives and also Life Pots were for sale, so Kaipo very nice. Um, and no exit, so we have a slightly awkward, but not terribly long, walk out of Cave Magnus for Windfox, and probably a rat tail that's gonna get turned in. I wonder if this prompts him to go down the hook route and find that edge. Yeah, you, you'd like to you'd like to see it because it looks now that that's really going to be the key to to a more early game power. Uh, though they are leaving the the early game a bit now, I just I think it would help a Windfox tremendous amount. Uh, but it looks like we're we're getting a, a little bit closer, taking a nice, nice rest. And I might have to be quiet again in a couple minutes, but I am um, already going to file some paperwork uh, complaining with a violation of procedures because it is it is my understanding as well that you have to talk nonstop during music. Yeah, and so yeah. it's really sad to see that. So we, we can, uh, uh, I know these great attorneys, uh, I think they're quadruplets. Uh, they're called Golbez, 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 and Golbez. They are hilarious. They are, they don't tan very well. There's a big shadow over there, but they do, uh, as I'm told, quote, demolish the competition. So um, uh, it's entirely possible that they can go ahead and help us out. Yeah, I, I think I would like to see my opponent in the courtroom um, observe the real terror. That's true, that's true, um, but you know, Make sure that you uh, just do it after uh, after a brunch because sometimes they do in fact get full. Uh, and speaking of full, it looks like the party on Bursic Badger side is full of people on the ground, and we are going to start some music again, uh, which I guess I have to stop talking on, but I can try to get down a little bit further on my list. So after Mom Bomb, you'll have the Fabul Gauntlet, and then 
let's say you're going to mount ordeals you'll see the first mylon and it looks like something might happen to me if i don't press me Uh, I do believe that the moratorium on our glorious banter and dialogue has been lifted. Uh, a few things of note, Windfox did find the curse string. Uh, also found the doggo, which had a glass hat. A glass hat is a excellent piece of physical defense. Percy Badger finds his rat tail. Objectives are being done, and we are making excellent progress, and we haven't even been underground yet. Yeah, and we're seeing here the difference of having an edge and not having an edge on Wind Fox's side. So right now, these these slimes, jellies, whatever you want to call them, they're not going to take a lot of physical damage. You're going to have to use magical abilities. Uh, you're going to be here for a while. Uh, this would be a great opportunity to use those J items to fill in the gap between having an offensive caster, uh, whether it's a black mage, a sage, uh, or even edge. So he's going to be, Wind Fox is going to be here for a while unless he's able to make that adjustment. Yep, hopefully we find a, um, uh, as you know, uh, uh, she's in chat. Uh, I wonder if Kick would actually, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see uh, if this does one on all four. I actually don't know, but we need a J item. Yeah, we got the Stardust right there. That That's that's got to go out. That's just, uh, that's that's the way to get through this for sure. Uh, Rat Tail, just a Drain Spear, uh, which is a solid dart. Um, <laughs> I believe that that Kick was literally so weak that it actually did no damage. Uh, no, use that. Sure seen that before <laughs> and there's a stardust that that's what we need that's what the doctor ordered there we Do go. dr sid coming through again with the prescription for all that ails you uh you see that face right he's got his teeth he's gritting his teeth he knows uh, why'd you make me do this and he pulls out the star veil or the star veil is. yeah unfortunately for wind fox at the moment he does have a back road yang um there is a way to go ahead and make that work. Uh, Jay Brun, a uh, uh, popular member of the community, has actually gotten quite good at it, where in Cave Evelyn, or Castle Evelyn, excuse me, if you steal a heart from a Lamia, you can do some shenanigans where um, you can actually go ahead and have Yang equip the harp right away if it works out, like with the turn order. And because the harp is a long-range weapon, uh, the game assumes that you've been back row. Um but I, none of that's happened. So um, hopefully we go ahead and get Yang in the front row sooner rather than later. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll definitely need it. I, I've never personally done that, but I'm, I'm always impressed by what the folks in this community come up with when it comes for new ways to um, explore and utilize the different parts of this game, which I think makes it all the more endearing to as you learn these things. Absolutely. Uh, if any of you folks are not on Discord, uh, we strongly encourage you to go ahead and do so. The reason I bring this up is because the best way to go ahead and find all those uh, things that these amazing members of our community are doing is uh, by interacting there. There's a newbie's corner to ask uh, questions. Uh, and the Tech Talk channel specifically, uh, there are a few members of our community that really understand the mechanics of, of how this game uh, is made. And uh, if you are a nuts and bolts kind of person where you really like to go ahead and explore how things are 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 made and kind of how everything works um it's a generous community with their knowledge and their time 
Um, and it gets to be quite fascinating if you love this game as much as so many of us do. So uh, if you're not on Discord, please go ahead and join. Yeah, and we can't stress enough, this is a really, really accessible randomizer. You can start off with a relatively friendly beginner flag set, go through uh, a whole bunch of the game, experience the weirdness that a randomizer brings, and then as you turn up the difficulty, you'll be able to get more and more help from members of the community. And everybody is just wonderful, welcoming, super helpful. I, I can't say enough for the for the Discord and everybody in here, uh, except for John, he tries to talk during music, which I, I'm re realizing now might have gotten me in trouble. Uh, what? No, the voices made me do it. Anyway, um, so Bursic is making a bit of a play here, fading uh, Baron in which we know is nothing terribly useful. Uh, losing that rune axe could be a little bit catastrophic. Uh, the saving grace is that he was heads up enough to go ahead and keep shopping. And so we do in fact have um, a mute knife on edge and that should kind of be our way through. Um, in terms of party comp, I would kind of rather have Porum than Yang. Um, I'd rather have two white mages to go ahead and kind of support this edge. Um, maybe even ditching the Tella. Um, and then maybe take a trap chest to get everyone up to Blink and Berserk. And both characters will have exit because we've already done um, we've already done Zod. And Rosa learns exit as soon as the Tower of Zod is done uh, to kind of go along with the vanilla game. But uh, we are uh, 44 minutes in. Uh, we're not underground yet. We've done half of our objectives, so we're three out of six. But um, uh, I guess probably feeling the pinch and just wants to go. Yeah, and, and that's an interesting trade-off when you think about when you think about Porum and you think about Yang, right? Because you've got Yang, who late late in the game with all these levels is going to be great, and then Porum, who with the health total kind of falls off near the end of the game and, and the real value is in the beginning so i think it's more of a is it delayed gratification or do i want to get what i want what i can get now uh bursik's going to take on these mad ogres and with the hourglass can keep them stopped and with the ability to kill mages because the mad ogres are considered mages will be some additional damage on these guys that we should make short work of them yep uh, i'm being corrected in chat by uh Tybalt, uh my fault uh apparently uh baronian was done um, we see the Elven Bow on Rosa, which does mage damage, uh, which is doing work. We have the Mute Knife. Uh, what I'm curious to see is will we have some uh, Bacchus Wine attempted to be stolen? Um, another benefit of having Porum, uh, because this game is perfectly coded, uh, Porum's crying ability, actually, very long story short, makes it easier for Edge to go ahead and steal things. So... Um, uh, and we are, in fact, going to go ahead and start to go ahead and sneak the wine here. So I want to point out to the Bursic Badger side, the, why are you casting life? And yeah, maybe you can answer this for me. Why would you cast life on these mad ogres that were just killed? So speaking of uh, things that are perfectly coded, uh, mad ogres count as uh, enemies that do not have what's referred to as the boss bit, which means that you can go ahead and do things like stop them with this hourglass or cast size on them or... When you have dimps, you can go ahead and cast Toad and do other things. Uh, that means that potions, such as life potions, will actually work on them as well. Every character in this game has a vitality stat. And when you multiply the vitality stat by, I want to say, 10, um, that will determine how much health you have when you go ahead and uh, are brought back to life. Enemies that do not have the boss bit, they have a vitality stat of 0. So when you time your life cast or life pot on them, they will die. You use the life pot, they are brought back to life, but with the vitality is at of zero, anything time zero is zero, and they die a second time. So basically what you're seeing is what's referred to as the life glitch. And when you are, <laughs> that's funny, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was the intention, but it's gone now. Um, it was a, a charmed ogre when the uh, uh, hourglass had worn off. Uh, basically, you're getting double the experience for everyone that you do a life glitch on. And Bursic Badger, from all that battling, gets the experience of the seven ogres, because you can't do it on the last one, and a black shirt, which would be great for the black mage await. Well, Tal can wear it. Yeah. And if you have a free boss, uh, you know, that helps to go ahead and try and get a stone cast off for a week or something like that, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly helpful. 
the wind fox is taking on bahamut now uh we'll see if he can get through it all the way before there's a, a shot this will be an interesting interesting change because when bursic badger did this he had edge swinging at him where wind fox instead has porum uh, however you get a powered up tella as well so let's see how this works out that was a very nice lit three was we're about halfway there uh that rune axe not in the center slot is going to have some agility issues i would like to see a uh star Veil getting off here uh and uh, this is uh 100 the right play i also uh, like the fact that we're getting one off on our white mages um uh looks like we're trying to get one off on everybody um and that is either a ruby or an elements at the uh king queen spot and that's ruby that's gross this is yeah. uh we do have a uh an ice claw which is going to help dramatically the magic is low but the physical attacks are quite high and R ruby always seems to be a, <laughs> a problem he, he can do so many different things so well that wherever he is if it's a, a decent spot at your level it's going to cause trouble just like that glare you know goodbye edge yeah that's really unfortunate that, as far as glare goes that, that's quite weak um and uh uh edge is your is your damage dealer there's the physical damage that we're, we're seeing here. Um, I'm a little worried that that Berserk might have gone out a little too soon. Uh, no, we're fine. Uh, sometimes you can go ahead and uh, get a little bit Berserk locked. Uh, and because the magic is so low, Edge is not really at any damage of dying here. Uh, one more attack will do it. There's only 6,000 uh, HP here. Uh, very nice use of the Elemental Claws. Now, Berserk Lock, that actually happened to me recently, and I said I should call my doctor, but now that we're on stream, um, how how can you deal with Berserk Locked, and how does it occur? Well, you know, if you find that you aren't able to move within 24 hours, I would have someone call a physician for you. But uh, uh, more specifically, it happens when uh, you're brought back to life. However, you have not been brought into the queue yet. Um, Final Fantasy IV, like many other games, uses an ATB system where there are ticks to go ahead and determine when everyone moves. If you haven't been brought into the queue yet and you are given an automatic attack uh, like Berserk, uh, the game gets very confused and you're basically frozen. At that point, the only thing you can really go ahead and do, uh, to my knowledge, is uh, kill your character and, and start over. It seems like a very bleak prognosis. So everyone out there in TV land, avoid getting uh i guess berserk locked or berserk glitched it, it it's not pretty yeah. so um we do see uh bursic uh using a drain spear which i like um and then timing it up with uh that's a really nice way of optimizing the attacks there uh you get a very strong attack with the with the drain spear and putting it uh, specifically on cindy who is the uh middle uh, and most power, uh, well, most HP of the of the three sisters there, and now a berserked edge it, whose back road is just going to absolutely go go to town once we see those damage totals going out. Uh, to answer your question in chat, uh, does berserk lock happen with the Avenger sword? It can. Um, uh, so the Avenger, um, when you were trying to do an Avenger glitch, um, if you have a character die at an inopportune moment. Uh, you know, maybe very early, maybe you had a, a, a wyvern that had a had a, a mega nuke that went through, and then you brought them back, but they never got into the queue. That can be uh, that can be a thing. Um, the Avenger can do some funky Avenger things. That again, people over in the Tech Talk channel will be able to go ahead and explain uh, quite specifically. But it can it can definitely have a lot of issues. And Bursic has uh, taken down all but Sandy, so that's really good. The, the middle sister, if you leave her up will after a turn or two use use an ability to bring the other two back so that can uh, the fight could go on forever you can also use that for a grind as well if you are so inclined wind fox is going through some of the trap chest in castle eblin here uh and this gets back to uh to another decision about whether you're going for loot or you're going for characters because you're you're investing the time and you're hoping to to get one versus the other and this may not work out for for wind fox but we'll have to see what the loot is yeah, um, the more time goes on, the less valuable this check becomes. Um, as we see a death is vanilla special with Dr. Luge in their spot. Um, I do like the Fire 3 cast here. Um, uh, it's the less risky of the options, and the stalemate should be no problem to go ahead and take out. Um, generally speaking, on T Wildish, 
uh, Castle Eblen is the place you go to go ahead and find a Holy Sword. So if you had a Cecil, um, honestly, it doesn't really matter what time it is. This is a, a perfectly valid check. And there's that Avenger. We do we did find a, a, a cane uh, in the Sand Ruby bed, which is an objective, so that might be relevant for Winfox at some point. But the only piece of gear that you're really going to find that's going to dramatically shift things would be an Adamant Armor. And they are on. Um, you have about a 30, uh, about a 35% chance or so of finding a tier eight item uh, in one of these, in, in each of these trap chests. Um, and then there are three uh, tier eights total. There are, there is a crystal sword, there's an X count, there's an admin armor. So, you know, all things considered, it's a decent chance um, and that can be game changing. It certainly can. Um, but this late into the seed when you don't have a crystal sword, I'm not, a hundred percent sure that this is exactly the play that I would go ahead and do. Bursic is heading in Tom now, and hopefully we will see what that wonderful dwarf has for a job. Uh, so part of this randomizer is that when you talk to the job dwarf, he has a random job. And I think it really adds to the world building, really makes me feel like I'm a part of this world and that's a living, breathing place with all kinds of people and places that I can go and explore and meet. That's a beautiful sentiment. I love everything about that. Um, well, there is a lot of talking too. So if you're not racing this game, talk to the NPCs. There's great, there's great stuff in there. Maybe not as world building as I'm portraying, but there, there are interesting tips and tidbits and, and things to make you smile because at the end of the day, this is a game. It's just fun. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the, um, the devs did an amazing job of not only having the NPCs be helpful, but also be uh, absolutely hilarious. Um, so we saw some. That's uh, that was a that was a good Tamra. Uh, heroin robe for uh, Rosa is absolutely no joke. Um, uh, with the with, you were not going to have any problems getting your characters up to RA one to get your turn order the way that you want with the Sid hero and a cursed ring. Uh, but that just makes it e even more guaranteed. If maybe you don't want to have Sid cursed um, because you want to rely on his damage a little bit. Um, and uh, the hourglasses are, are wonderful too. Um, sometimes you want to go ahead and have them um, in case you come across a rude gauntlet. Now we've already seen the gauntlet, but let's say we come across Baron Guards somewhere rude or uh, another uh, boss that does not have the boss bit. We've already seen dimps, but you find something that you can go ahead and uh, hourglass. Maybe we have dolls at a rude spot. Maybe uh, the mom bomb that you were talking about so brilliantly uh, earlier as we find a darkness crystal for free. That's an objective up there, uh, the White Spear Altar. Um, our glasses are always nice to have. Yeah, and we get some coffins here. And then I guess your your burst is gonna be faced again with that decision. Do I go use the darkness right away to check for another character or not? Uh, and that's an interesting that's an interesting thought. Uh, what would you think, John? Would you go for that other character now? I wouldn't go for the character, I'd go for the objective. Um, now we don't have a ton of power with this team. Um, and we did not uh, find sirens for sale. I don't believe we had them in the first in the hook shop, um, and I do not believe that we had them uh, in any of these underground shops. Um, so, oh, excuse me, sirens were in the hook shop. Um, so with the combination, uh, that's a pretty. F so those are the Baron guards, but between the coffins and the hourglasses, that's very, very, very free. Um, not to mention the experience that you can go ahead and get. Um, so that's something that we'll probably see our runners go ahead and do here. Uh, I would really love to see the cursed ring go on. I would love to see the battle speed get dropped down. I would love to see the coffins get used. And if you really drop down the battle speed uh, with the party that Persic has, you can get some double and triple life glitches and get a really nice infusion of XP. Um, but between the, um, you know, the mantra is do your freebies and do your objectives. Um, uh, you know, I'm a sucker for uh, for a, a good early moon dive. Uh, Cecil could be up there. Um, uh, you have hourglasses for trap chests, and you have you have an objective up there. Um, um, I'm going up there uh, as soon as I can just to get my objective done. And it looks like Bursig is on the same page as you, going for the guards now. I think we'll hopefully see some of those consumables coming out and giving them a, a tough time. Looks like we're going to start with the hourglass, and then we got a coffin, and then perhaps even a life glitch. Look at that, yep. all queued up. Yep, that is, the, that is the uh, the uh, safe way to do it. That is the smart way to do it. Um, these uh, J items are readily available. Um, I think we might have had a, a bit of a wipe on Windfox's side, which is unfortunate, because um, then we have to go ahead and kind of redo these traps again. Uh, so hopefully uh, we're able to go ahead and get through that as quickly as we can. 
Uh, looks like uh, Bursic might be trying to go ahead and conserve the um, uh, conserve uh, the coffins. I don't know that I love this exactly. We're clearly not, you know, struggling too much to get through it. Um, but we, we, we've seen races that have certainly come down to seconds. Um, uh, not to get newspapered here <laughs> while we're doing comms, but you know the coffins are right there. Uh, but regardless, uh, got through very well uh, with a lot of poise. Let's see what we get. Oh, magma key. That's our underground. Oh wait, no, we're already here. What a shame. What a shame. Well, Wind Fox is able to re recapture the treasure from one of these chests, and so I wonder if we get the the Avenger again. And the Avenger is an interesting sword, All right? So you put it on, it's going to make your character berserk. Uh, one of the other interesting techniques in this game is, is if you have another weapon equipped and you equip the Avenger in the middle of a battle, you keep the original stats of that previous weapon. So if you're using that with Cecil and you have, say, a Crystal Sword next Excalibur, you can maintain that power and have the free Berserk. Correct. Yep. Uh, the Avenger is a incredibly powerful uh, um, uh, weapon. Um, uh, Possumorpheus, uh, huge, uh, just main, main, major, major play player here. Uh, the community loves the Avenger. Uh, I often said that one day I hope to find a woman who would look at me the way that Possum looks at an Avenger. And fun fact, I did, which is kind of great. Um, you know, so GG's to me. Um, we see Bursic. Uh, I don't know if the curse ring went on or not. Um, uh, we're seeing just how punchy this can be. This is doable. Um, you have to play it right. Um, I'd like to see the silk web go out and getting characters berserked pretty quickly. This is another case where, um, while the kick is going to do some AoE to the whole party, Blink is really your friend here. Uh, I think if you're going to take this on, you might need to go ahead and make sure that Sid is cursed, and you might want to drop down your battle speed so you have some time to go ahead and get your, your uh, options off. Uh, see, that Blink on Edge isn't going to do much because the next kick is going to go ahead and take him out. So this might be a wipe. Um, if this is something that you are committed to doing, it's absolutely doable, but you just might need to affect uh, your strategy a little bit here. Yeah, it's a delicate balance between the healing and the blinking because the, the blinking is going to remove all the, the powerful punch, but the healing lets you get over the kick. Wind Fox previously picked up 20 sirens. So Wind Fox is definitely looking to, to make a move when it comes to the leveling department. And it'll be interesting to see um, how he reacts once he sees the edge at the end of this cave. So it looks like Bursic is still holding on. We got Rosa and Yang still alive. So we're, we're doing nicely there. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna keep hitting again and again and that oh wow that was a really close hit <laughs> it's an exciting fight here so like you said it's doable but it's gonna be a little bit tricky to to keep going because you've got a punch a kick a punch and a kick and that's gonna take yang down yeah this is unfortunately a wipe you have about i, I want to say it's, it's either 23 or 28 000 hp here i want to say it's 23 000, but that could be wrong uh, either way we're not gonna be able to get the damage through um you know with, with fights like these uh the sooner you can clog up the queue the better uh, Bursig was heads up enough to, uh, and we're going to bail, which honestly is, is fine. K summon uh, options are uh, a little less viable. You have the moon, you have shield of one if you want to do your freebies. We have warp glitch available for dwarf, that's two key item checks. We have the tower key, that's two checks. Like there are other things that we can do that are probably better. So I, uh, I very much agree uh, with the decision to go ahead and bail and move on to greener pastures. Yeah, he had just not quite enough power, and with a little bit more power, you can go through that, and it would be pretty trivial. So Wind Fox now picks up the edge at the at the end of the cave. Now it makes you wonder if he's thinking, "Oh no, am I going to be really behind or not?" Based on that, and poor him at, as expected. So the runners both have the same party, which I, I can't say I disagree with or I I greatly dislike because I think they they've got a good setup with a lot of options given what they're working with now. Yeah, I agree. Um, first, I, I probably would have swapped out the Tella for the Porpoise. Um, that's me. Uh, the 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 early utility of Tella, uh, you know, Tella and Sid are are, are extremely similar. Uh, and, and this is serious. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> one this one um, will go away. Um, yeah. Bye bye. Um, so uh, you know, uh, Tella early game has a lot of utility with uh, spells, post ordeals, and exit, cure two, decent amount of HP, you have blink, Sid has a good HP total and a decent amount of strength, but it caps, you know, you, you get diminishing returns the longer that these characters stay uh, in your party. Swapping out a Tella for a Porum 
Porum learns other spells. Porum can wear something like a heroin robe. Her uh, you know, you can rely on Porum to do some DPS if you get the right equipment. Plus, you're going to learn things like Cure 3, and you'll have your Blink, you'll have your Berserk, um, you'll have your Exit. So uh, I probably would have swapped that Tela for uh, Porum at this point. Um, but that being said, uh, largely because of this edge, um, and with the fact that Yang continues to get these levels, um, I have no problem with this party at all. Wind Fox is heading now down, trying to get underground access. It'll be interesting to see if we're going to end up going for those ogres. Uh, do you remember what was in the treasure chest with the mad ogres? I want to say it was a black shirt. Black shirt. And, and black a shirt. buttload of XP, which was the real... Uh, yes. <laughs> the, the, real, the real treasure is the XP we earned along the way. Oh, okay. You know, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning. We're going to go for it here. Um, I don't think that the the producers of this game really did an adequate job of, uh, well, number one, avoiding copyright infringement. How is that not Frankenstein? But number two, how incredibly messed up this entire storyline is between, like, Luge messing with Edge's parents, like, did they do experiments? Was this, like, a Hojo thing from Final Fantasy VII? Like... Uh, and I've, I've heard people refer to this as like the comic relief. What's funny about this? Everything about this is like straight up horrifying. And they have, uh, I don't know, man, this, everything about Luge creeps me out horribly. Yeah, it's very rewarding in the vanilla game to to put him in the dirt. Uh, it, it is pretty messed up. I was actually playing the uh, vanilla game with my with my daughter. Um, a couple of months ago and going through some of the stuff. I'm like, wow, this really is kind of messed up and, and pretty terrifying. And you, you don't think about it playing it when you're uh, when you're a youngster. You're like, oh, big numbers. I beat the monster. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it a little bit later. You're like, oh, my, this is. And there's a the black shirt uh, at, as expected. How old's your daughter? 15. Oh, oh yeah, that's fun. Uh, mine is nine yeah. and is slowly getting into gaming, uh, which yeah. has been fun. But 15 yeah. uh, is probably a little less frustrating to watch than my nine-year-old. Love you, Katie. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, with uh, Bursic going ahead and doing Tower, um, uh, at this point, you're kind of making an active decision to go ahead and fade the moon. So, uh, if I am, and it's a perfectly valid um, uh, thought process. I know that um, uh, Dusty Griff, uh, legend in the community, um, who was just one of the cleanest runners that, that you could hope to see in a community of already incredibly quick, clean runners, um, had a steadfast belief in going ahead and completing as much stuff, um, uh, on the, on the blue planet and underworld before you head off to the moon. Um, I wonder if we're going to see Wind Fox, uh, do dwarf after this with warp glitch. We do have two key item checks. We have another character check. Maybe we find a Cecil, although we don't have a holy sword for him. Um, and then uh, head off to Sheila before going up to uh, uh, up to the moon. Yeah, I'd really like to see Wind Fox do that, especially getting back to the to the previous point of, of why would you keep T Tello over Porum? I, I think maybe Wind Fox is thinking warp because that will give you two that will give you two checks for one check. And there's a crystal ring for Bursic for B and Lugay, so a nice item, but not going to get you any farther or closer to any objectives. I mean, I love the crystal ring. Was that the Queen of Evelyn's? Anyway, I digress. Um, so uh, great match, uh, great uh, dragon defense, uh, uh, really wonderful piece of, of uh, defensive equipment, plus five agility. I do love a crystal ring. Probably not the progression that Bursic was hoping for. Um, Bursic has already completed the uh, super cannon room. That was the Asura that lasted all of eight seconds. Um, when we get to the bottom of the tower, we will find out what that key item was. And uh, one of the nice little benefits of this is we'll have a air uh, ship uh, switcheroo. So we don't have to worry about getting rid of the Falcon. It will stay there forever. We'll see what the key item is, and then we'll see what Bursic decides to do next. Oh, I'm sorry. So when there's poison walk, we can go ahead and are we allowed to talk over the poison walk? Is that okay? No. Community? Or do we need to be it's quiet so we can hear the sound? It's a special sound. We it we need to be in sound. sync with it. I yeah, mean, yeah. Until, we have poison lock, <laughs> until we have poison lock actually show up through the playlist of Edward. No, nah, you guys can talk all over. It's all good. Oh, why? Well, thank you, sir, for the permission to talk oh, over the poison walk. That's what I'm here oh, for. Hey. Oh. And speaking uh, of the poison walk, that's an adamant armor for Bursic. 
That is an Adam Armor. Now, that's not progression, but it's sort of progression. Um, yeah, I think it's a ticket to run over a few things. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, uh, and we are, we are in fact, seeing uh, a nice completionist uh, method being very thorough and very meticulous to go through all the key item checks. Um, yeah, that edge is going to do things. Uh, even though we don't have the quote-unquote Hanzo Steel that you might find. Um, actually, we haven't even seen the shop yet. We, we might have some Ninja Blades for sale. Adamant, adamant armor, when apparently we're not going to get a look. Okie dokie then. Um, as we see, uh, that is elements. Uh, we have already seen, um, uh, which we'll call it, we've already seen uh, the dimps, so we know that that's elements at the first spot. And I want to say Val at the second spot? We saw it when we went to Zot. That was like an hour ago, two beers ago, so not 100% sure that's right. That was in the second spot. Way to go, me. Um, so we have an attack. Um, you'll see a brief little pause going through here, and those are the resistances being set. Um, uh, even though the magic's a little high here, um, I don't, I don't foresee us having any problems whatsoever. Yeah, I think we're at the point now, especially with the adamant armor, that most of the things, unless there's a, a particular setup, is not going to be problematic in, anywhere on the blue planet. Yeah, no. Uh, Sid still had that rune axe on, and for whatever reason, uh, Ru uh, Rubicante in the elements phase is a mage. Why? I don't know. Uh, but you just saw that rune axe do work, and it went right through the refill. Uh, here is Val, which we all totally remembered. Uh, let's see who our character is. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, there we don't go. I mean, honestly. You're an hour ten in, and you don't have you don't have the sword. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, you have the Avenger. No. Right? Oh doesn't. no, no. Bursic doesn't have it. Okay. Yeah. No. You'd be looking at an accessel, and that's. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's me, one of my favorite things to do, which I'm desperately trying to make the meta, uh, are trap chests on the moon. Um, crystal ring, adamant armor, edge is going to get through anything and on the moon you have a 60 percent chance per trap chest give or take of finding a tier 8 item and 66 percent of those 60 percent steiner math tm uh is gonna have a holy sword up there if it's me i replace yang i take that cecil and i go find the thing yeah he he, he is just so powerful in this game and uh, he could do so much work and I, and I think depending, Bursic like, probably should feel good about finding that edge early and hopefully is thinking that I'm, I'm ahead and I can afford to take a little more power to go a little bit safer. Uh, meanwhile, on the, the right side, Wind Fox is still dealing with the Badge of Sisters and unfortunately Remedy comes up, which is going to bring the, the littlest sister back. Uh, so it's going to extend the fight a little bit. Uh, Bursic actually just picked up from the from the warp glitch, the adamant rock. Yep, that's half an objective. Uh, we could be uh, kind of inching our way toward Gobo here. And that's the pass. That pass is driving my booty to the moon ASAP. Um, and we might be getting a look for uh, for Ninja Blades here. Let's see what we got. No, we do have Cat Claws. If you are, if you're investing in this Yong, um, that's, a, that's a good thing to pick up here. And if I had to guess, um, we are selling things uh, for those cat claws specifically. Um, uh, I don't know if it's me. Uh, that Cecil and free traps on the moon are, are a little too uh, a little too tempting for for me. But uh, we've spent you know an hour of the seed with Yong. We've got some good levels. We've got some good HP. Uh, now we've got some good gear. Uh, it's it's not it's a perfectly defensible play. It's just not necessarily one that I would go ahead and go with. Yeah, I think I think it's a safe one. Uh, you're you're kind of banking on that you're gonna you're not gonna end up hitting those holy swords, and that you're gonna be able to just get through the rest of the objectives uh, without getting anything back for it. So I can absolutely see why uh, why that's gonna be the way it is. Uh, Wind Fox is able to get rid of Cindy, which means it's only a matter of time before Sandy and Mindy fall. Uh, yep. Uh, sometimes the charm from Sandy can be quite rude. Um but uh, I think we have enough power here that we, we should be okay. 
Um, first it finds Bacchus one. Uh, I, I, I spy with my little eye an E ninja in chat that is very happy. Maybe a little sad that we went ahead and only got eight instead of 50 wines, uh, but that's nice. Uh, also worth noting that the three free traps, uh, excuse me, three free chests or pots or whatever you want to call them, uh, that Bursic had found in there had some really good stuff uh, to sell. Uh, you might not necessarily use any of it, but it was a good amount of money, so he was able to go ahead and pick up some wine. Yeah, it's nothing like a, a nice beverage, and it, it seems at first, well, why do I want a Bacchus wine when, when I have white mages? But the ability to berserk your own fighting character on their turn instantly is really, really, really nice. Yeah. There's that uh, that charm uh, over on uh, on uh, Wind Fox's side. Ah, but we're fine. So Yeah, it, it, Edge saves the day. Rosa was just a little bit confused. We were talking about wine. She, you know, being at whatever time it is in the morning, probably just needed a few late night drinks before the bartender finally kicked her out. So that's why she was a little confused where she had to go. No big deal. Edge Edge kind of, you know, got her back into into reality and, and she's good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of late night drinks, uh, cheers. So um, if you're Wind Fox, OK, and if you had you've had a couple of wipes, um, you know, the, the time is starting to go ahead and, and, and rack up there a little bit. You might feel the need to go ahead and kind of be bold a little bit right now. That darkness crystal is for free. That That's a free darkness crystal in the freebie. Um, I wonder if you uh maybe aggressively go after the, the that uh yang at the queen spot because that's not a very attractive spot or if you just start you know going for the moon um you know looking for uh i was gonna say going to boston but we already found both both of our bosses um you have to wonder if win fox's adjustment is going to be to try to do what bursic hasn't already done yeah, I think I think if I was Win Fox, I think I would look at going for the moon. Uh, Bursic just picked up the other half of that objective with the Legend Sword from Sheila. So once okay. again, Sheila has the goods. Now, uh, speaking of the goods, uh, and here's where that Cecil gets to be quite relevant. Sid Forge is glorious, okay? Because you can get uh, a Thor Hammer, which is pretty good, right? You can get a gigant axe, which not only can uh, Sid go ahead and chop and chop things up with, but so can Cecil and so can Kane. And all of a sudden, Cecil has your weapon now, which you just dismissed. Or you can get the glorious, the delicious, the beautiful, wonderful, mm -mm 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 -mm, so good fiery hammer. So let's see what we get. If, it, if it's that Gigant Axe, I'm getting that Cecil from Mysidia immediately. And after robbing our wonderful Smith, we'll see what's in the shop. All right, protect some apples. All right. Yeah, some nice yeah. some nice other accessories here. Yeah, those, those mirrors are interesting. Um, I don't know that we have the money to buy any of this stuff, though. Uh, I just I want that Bursic's forward. doing his best. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have, uh, I don't think we have the, the power for it. Um, What's really nice about, if this ends up being a Gigant Axe, what's really nice is you can give it to an RA1 character. All right, it's a Thor hammer. So uh, there is no bad forge for um, for Sid. Um, you know, if you get a, a Caliburn or a Cecil, if you get scrap metal from an edge, if you get, you know, basically any forge from a mage uh you know they, they don't really do that much or they're they're flat out you know like legitimate trash uh that sid doesn't have any bad ones so um he will likely be cursed through some of the more challenging bosses including zoromus um but even that plus 15 strength kind of offsets the 15 penalty throw a black belt on him if you put, don't sell that oh bold move selling the crystal Ooh. ring oh my heart and soul oh well, Bursic wanted that Murrah, and he got it. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to pin your ears back and go for it, right? And he, Bursic's going to go. You want you want the big damage? So the best defense is good offense. Let's see if it pans out. It's true. I mean, crystal rings are often used for agility manip, and you don't really have to go ahead and, uh, and do that too much. Um, uh, Frankie Bones uh, pointing out in chat that if you don't want to full-blown curse your Sid, you can go ahead and put a Dwarf Axe on him to start the fight, which is a minus five agility, and then swap it in the middle of the fight. While other stats like Wisdom, Willpower, and Strength will go ahead and change with equipment that gets put on during uh, your fight. 
once agility is set, it does not change. So if you change your uh, your weapon, the agility from the beginning of the match does not change. So by switching over to the Thor hammer, you get all the benefits and you still stay a little bit slower. All right, Bursic has launched the big whale and we'll be heading to the moon shortly. Now, I'm really interested to see what Wind Fox is going to do here because we know from before that the bonus character is going to be Cecil. Will Wind Fox pick him up? Well, Wind Fox has the Avenger. Um, yeah. And it looks like we're headed in that direction. If there's got to be something that brings Wind Fox into uh, to kind of catch up a little bit because he's certainly behind at the moment. Um, and this is far from over, folks. Well, let's make no mistake. I know it's, it's, it's looking... Uh, certain kind of ways Bursic has four objectives completed and is heading toward a fifth uh, don't forget that Wind Fox is about to get his adamant rock and the darkness was for free and not for nothing so is the legend sword so this is certainly not over um that uh the utility of a Cecil who's just so uh absurdly strong uh in addition to an Avenger which is just a tremendously powerful weapon um is uh is 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 quite legitimate Unfortunately, Wind Fox is going to be Avenger glitching the Great Bow Medusa arrows. So the power that you're going to see in this specific fight from him, not great. Um, but I, I don't see Wind Fox not getting through this uh, battle. And then from there on out, that Avenger is going to do some serious work. All right. And who do we have here for a lunar character? It's Tella. Tellas are dupe. You get one dupe and a uh, wrong old man. I was thinking that the only character I honestly would take up here at this point would be uh, would be Fu, but we got the wrong AARP mage up here. It's a shame because uh, a nice vanilla Fu is always a wonderful surprise coming up to the moon. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Brick, if you are Bursic, are you going right down to that White Spear altar? Yeah, I'm a real fan of doing the objectives immediately. The the White Spear Altar is again you're you're down into the lunar subterrain. You have the save spot right there. If you want to go for some more treasure, you've got the ribbon room. I I like to go down there and just and get treasure. I am a go from the bottom to the top moon kind of guy. I don't know if that makes me a troll or a memer, but that's just who I am on the inside. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I believe we're taking some uh, some gold dragons here. Uh, let's see, let's count the key items, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doing this with nine key items is a little bit awkward. I understand that the pass is lit up. Uh, excuse me, but the pass does not count as a key item. For those of you that might not be aware, once you get to 10 key items, oh man, I'm gonna burp again. Ooh, this is a good beer. Oh, excuse me. Um, you get double the experience. So with a light glitch here, you're gonna go ahead and end up with 90,000 XP, which is a lot, make no mistake. Um, however, um, if had you waited for 10 key items, you would have had 180,000. The other part that I'd be curious to get your thought on is you have, uh, you have Adam and Edge. Do you really need levels right now? Yeah, I, I, I would think you wouldn't, um, because if you're getting levels now with nine key items, this to me says, I need help to get these bosses to, to go through and look for more key items and defeat them. But I think with Adam and Edge, I'm, I can't comprehend of anything here that I'd be uncomfortable doing. Uh, it might be, I don't know if there's a certain threshold on some spells, maybe looking to get uh, a new spell on Rosa. That could be a, a possibility. I mean, that's I'm great, not sure I'd go for it. That's a great point. Cure 4 is a, um, is, is a, a very nice benchmark to reach for her. Uh, sometimes you'll see folks that uh, if they're trying to go ahead and single dip the Fey March when they get underground and Sirens are readily available, uh, if they have a Rosa, they'll get Rosa to Cure 4. That's kind of your your cleanup if things get a little bit sideways. You know, there are certain uh, bosses that can do damage where adamant armor doesn't matter. We've seen Kainatsu, we haven't seen DKC. And while DKC is a free boss, quote unquote, you still need to be able to go ahead and, and, and heal up enough to get through with them. Uh, there are a handful of bosses where adamant armor just does not do the trick. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, um, it's uh, you know, maybe just a little bit of safety, maybe just want a little bit of, of a push to go ahead and get through. Um, we did just do the one. Uh, it's possible maybe Bursic saw that he only had the 90,000 XP and wants to do the rest of his sirens when he has uh, another key item. 
Uh, but either way, we are healing up, and we're about to take a look at our fifth objective. All right, and I, and I love saving here, and like I said before, having access immediately to two, really three checks with the with the ribbon room with those two chests in it, and then going a little bit deeper for a third. That's a lot of the checks here in the lunar subterrain. Absolutely. There is a, a, a mentality that when you're only missing one key item, which is what we are missing here, that's gross. That's gross. That's gross. Oh. That's gross. Now, that's great. I mean, speaking of things that add in armor doesn't matter. You have a Sid that you can anchor and you have three, not for nothing, relatively strong melee characters. The safe route uh, of doing this is to go ahead and kind of see what you're seeing here, which is to take out the defender and then, you know, specifically do attacks toward your uh, CPU. And with the with the damage that you're seeing here, it's not that bad. It, it, it's really not. Um, we have about 23,000 HP on the main CPU. The defender is going to go ahead and always heal 10% of whatever the health is of, of the orb. Um, and it's not going to take that long here. Um, and look at Yang hitting for 1,500 in the back row. That's impressive. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of damage here. But if it's me, I just berserk and figure it out later. Um, it, it, it's just a little bit faster. And I think because of the anchoring that you have, you're able to go ahead and kind of get through it. Um, but we're doing plenty of damage. And while this is not ideal, um, we're going to be fine. Yeah, C CPU is an inter interesting banana. I think every time I... I Approach it. I think I try to get cute. I end up blowing myself up. So I really like what Bursic is doing. Just doing the the generic strategy: kill the healer, heal through the mazer, and just slowly chunk down the the big CPU boss. Yeah, and it's not even that slow. Look at that Thor hammer doing twenty five hundred. I mean, it, it's it's really not that slow. Um, yeah, he's in a good spot. Yep. Uh, we got a cure four going out there. Um, not quite sure why the star bell went on Sid, but uh, maybe he was thinking about reflecting a spell and decided against it. Um, honestly, I mean, for as gross as this can be with his party and the equipment that he has, uh, that CPU is not going to be around for too long. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, you're not really missing, missing Cecil in this battle. Um, no. So he's just fine. And then big CPU goes down and the attacker won't be long for this battle map either. Yep. So, um, you know, if this ends up being Sand Ruby or Luka Key, uh, we are in combo. So, uh, the mantra of do your objectives. Uh, is this a hard required white spirit altar? We're gonna find out. It is. Oh, it is. How so, wonderful. Um, that's 10 key items. Um, we can go ahead and grind. We have to pass. Uh, the sand ruby is uh, not a difficult objective to go ahead and complete. Um, a bursic is very, very, very much in the driver's seat here. Um, it would take a an awful lot for uh, for Wind Fox to come back from this, unfortunately. The Wind Fox is about to go meet the doctor, uh, the creepy doctor who does awful things. So I, I look forward to him being put down to the ground again with his uh, his little dance and that lovely silly music that goes with it. And it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so Bursa going to the Ribbon Room. Um, so this is two hundred thousand XP. Um, that's that uh, edge is going to make it no matter what, because while the wave will do um, uh, twenty five percent of your health, uh, the ice twos that go out, uh, the Adam armor is going to negate that to one, and you have a Rosa and a Tell to kind of keep everyone alive. There's forty two thousand HP here. This is going to take a little while. Um, you can go back up two floors, uh, and then you are um, uh, you're at the Gold Dragons, which might go a little bit faster. Um, I mean, you're seeing the, the damage input is is significant. You're seeing the Thor hammer go to work. You're seeing the edge go to work. Um, it's not going to take that long. Uh, I still don't think this is quite the route I would go. I don't know if uh, maybe we're hoping for a second Admin armor or a Murasame or or maybe something out of out of one of those uh, one of those chests. Um, uh, but this is a relatively free boss, um, and you're you're looking at Sid's worst forge weapon and just seeing the absurd attack that's coming out from it. So. Um, it's a valid play. It's going to be a nice little uptick in uh, 7,500, my lord. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of good stuff. That's good stuff. So you're going to see a good uptick in levels. I think, um, you know, Bursi just has to ask himself, how much do I want to grind to? And then when can I go? 
Yeah, I can't help but wonder if it, if it's an edge health issue, right? He's only got 1,700 mask health. I know he's got adamant armor, but maybe he's trying to get, you know, over 2,000, 2,200, just in case some difficulties with the big bangs. Uh, but there's Cure 4 and Life 2. So that's uh, that's definitely going to be helpful. Let's see what's in the chest here. I mean, those are two darts. Um, those are two uh, pretty healthy darts there. Um, we had Eddie a long time ago. We're not, we're certainly not going back now. Um, you know, so maybe if it's me and you want to be safe, uh, maybe getting Rosa to 2000 HP and then, uh, off we go. Um, if you still have that crystal ring, that'd be pretty good defense for, um, for Z. I think we had, we had, uh, protect rings in the forge shop. Um, those were, uh, those are, those are quite good as well. Um, and, uh, here we are now using the hourglasses, um, Versic, uh, not panicking, uh, making sure that uh, everything is set up the way that he wants it to be, and um, is going to be heading off to Zeroms very, very soon. Windfox just defeated Dr. Luge and got a crystal ring himself, so that'll be that'll be helpful for him, and it'll be really interesting to see where he decides to go next. Um, I don't know. We don't really know where he's going to go, obviously. Only he does, and, and that's the fun of the randomizer, is sometimes you... You make a decision, and you don't have complete information ever, and you get to see how it turns out. Yeah, it's a it's an awfully uh, steep hill to climb. Uh, it'd be interesting if, let's say, Bursic had found uh, Luka Key. You still have to go down there. You still have to fight the boss, and with the power that he has, it wouldn't be that much of an issue. It'd be maybe a little awkward, but it wouldn't be uh, awful. Uh, and if Wind Fox were to quickly find you know, Sand Ruby, maybe might have a, a, a bit of a, a time change here. But this is. Uh, as we look at those levels, um, and we're getting ready to go ahead and, and exit out of here, um, uh, I think uh, we're uh, going to see uh, Zeromus go down quite soon. The only thing that might delay the process a little bit is if Bursig would do what I would do, which is forget to actually turn in the Sand Ruby. <laughs> so we'll see if that's what happens here. Yeah, showing up to Zeromus and, and wondering, how do I get him to, to change out of this form? Why does he keep shaking? Oh, wait a minute. I don't, I can't continue the game. I've done that. It's embarrassing. Absolutely. I've never made a mistake like that. No, nope, me never. Anyway, uh, you know what I think is really impressive about your first time doing comms brick is that there is not a single person in chat who has fallen asleep. It's two o'clock in the morning over here in the glorious state of New Jersey as Versa is going to go ahead and turn into Sand Ruby. And not a single person is bored. Not a single person is sleeping. There are no, some might explicitly say, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Zs, anywhere to be found. And I think that is because you are such a dynamic public speaker. You know, that, that really does make me feel good. I think if I saw Zs in the chat, like, I think that would really, really hurt me. And right. it would be discouraging and I would be toxic. I would probably, I'd contact the my attorneys again. I probably would file complaints on Twitch for toxic behavior and it would it would be a really big deal. So I hope I don't see any kind of Z's or sleeping. That would just be terrible. Absolutely. Yep. And then uh, please stay tuned for uh, Brick and Bricks uh, seminar on reverse psychology. But my friend, my friends, with your very, very first time on comms, which you have been phenomenal, by the way. Uh, please go ahead and make sure we give him break house to follow uh, because if this is his commentary, we can only imagine how his stream is. Uh, buddy, you get to go ahead and uh, you get to do the thing and I'm willing to bet you know exactly what that thing is. I do, but I might need a little help from chat. Oh, so maybe, now wait a minute. I was expecting to see Z's as an offensive insult to me, but mm -hmm. instead I see the Z flags here. So when you look at Final Fantasy Free Enterprise, we've randomized all the bosses, but Zeromus, he's a bit too big, a bit too complicated to move anywhere else in the game. So instead, we randomize what he looks like. So the question we want to ask now is whose butt are we going to kick tonight? Beautifully done. Be I got chills. I got chills. That's uh, and that's impressive because it's really hot in the attic right now. Uh, beautifully done. We have over 600 sprites of uh, overwhelmingly uh, very much thanks to the the uh, tireless work of of Scala Kitty, um, the heart and soul of Free Enterprise. Um, uh, no one cosplays quite like Z. So uh, we will go ahead and see uh, what we're dealing with here. And there are other questions too we can ask. Uh, mm. Is the butt cute? Does the butt wear a hat? 
Uh, and if there are other questions, chat, please, please join in, not only with the questions, but the answers as well. Absolutely. So uh, a question about the actual seed, because uh, I was so blown away uh, by your confidence and your clarity and your cadence. Uh, I did not even pay attention to whether or not Sid put on the curse string or not. Uh, and that's an interesting uh, question because, uh, and I'm going to say probably not, because uh, he probably would have gone first, although he's not in the center slot. Um, little awkward to have Edge going here because he's got uh, absurd power, but you also have that spoon that you might want to dart. Um, but it looks like we're just boxing up and going. Um, there's really not a with the power here there's not a lot that we can't do and dear lord heaven and earth what is that thing i really didn't need to see that at two in the morning i'm right? gonna need to go to sleep a little bit and that thing will haunt my nightmares i was gonna say have you guys so, never seen aliens before thank you. come on what that oh that, that that's from alien yes yeah, xenomorph it's what they it's what chases them around okay and, I, and then and then i have the... seen them they're scary no, no, no. Oh, wait, wait. I have seen this. That's when you you go to the space bar and then you order you order the special, right? Uh, and then hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime girl. Yes, close enough. Right? Getting face hugged. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. I gotta get myself a mog for the house. Anyway, um, we have uh, a nerf that went through. Uh, it hit Edge. Edge has been recovered quickly. Uh, we are dealing quite a bit of power. Uh, we have Rosa getting zerked. We have Sid getting zerked. Is Tell gonna hop in the party? No, Tell's gonna be in heal duty if Tell lives. That's a big if, nerfed or not. Yeah, nope. So. Oh, uh, that was a close. That was a close. No. It, it was. It was. Um, and are we? Uh, are we just going for it? Nope. So uh, very wisely, we've gone ahead and left Yong uh, with his tremendous HP total, which you were talking about at the very beginning of the seed. Uh, there, Brick. Uh, as our chemist, um, and let's take a good look at how much uh, damage we have going through here. Yeah, you, you gotta love Angry Rosa too. I think it's a, a greatly underappreciated power uh, of any of the white mages, but you know, especially Rosa. I just like the idea of saying Angry Rosa. It uh, it works really, really well. Yeah, it looks like we're doing kind of in that eight to nine thousand uh, per round territory. Um, and that can be a little bit perilous um, because that kind of leans us toward uh, what's referred to as kind of the wombo combo here. I think we are going to end up tipping the HP. In fact, that was the tip. So even though um, uh, we um, saw the shake, we were not going to see a big bang in here because that was the refill. What I'm curious to see if it's going to happen is if we're going to go ahead and get uh, what's referred to as the Wombo Combo. So what that means is you have a big bang that goes off, um, and then before you really have any time to heal, especially with Rosa being zerked, uh, the Medio comes out right away. Um, so there's a decision to be made here from Burst. Like, everything's probably fine, but you have to make a decision as to whether or not you want to uh, nerf this big bang or if you're just going with it. And the fact that he hasn't gone ahead and zerked Yang to get that extra damage going through tells me that he might be leaning towards zerk or toward nerfing, but time is a waste in here. Uh, let's see what happens. All right, we do have an yeah, unnerfed. Here we thing. go. Should Edge live, it's likely that uh, he'll probably dodge rocks. Okay, everyone does live. Uh, that's excellent news for Bursic. Damage continues to go out. That cure three is enormous. That cure three might go ahead and solidify out the whole thing here. Just a ton of damage with that adamant. Because those are those are long swords. Or did he get the one Mura? He's got a Mura. Okay. All right. So we have a black hole. So we'll have to go ahead and rebox us up. That's going to give Rosa an opportunity to go ahead and heal up. We are. I still think we're fine here, and we're we got to be incredibly close to tipping toward uh, rocks if we haven't gotten there already. Uh, these attacks that you're seeing were already queued up. Uh, the berserk status has worn off, so you will see option going through, and there it is. There's your medio. So someone's getting hit. Um, ooh, Edge did get hit. Uh, Rosa getting a cure four here will be huge. Uh, only putting it on edge. Oh, and that's it. We are done. Okay. That is a snap, crackle, pop. I'm hungry. Uh, Bursic, uh, uh Badger is our winner uh, tonight with a time of one hour, 36 minutes, 53 seconds. If you have not already, please go 
ahead and get those GGs in chat. And by the dinging in our ear, I do believe that we are joined by Bursic Badger himself. GGs, my friend. Thank you. So, um, not exactly overwhelming power uh, from the get-go. Um, how did you decide to go ahead and do your early routing? Uh, I mean, Earth Crystal made Treasury an easy choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw those longsword, that longsword for sale there in Troya, and uh, as soon as the hook popped up that I think it was Antlion, I'm like, I'm just going to go grab that and see what, what I'm probably going to have to fight going down there in case I get really lucky and find a Magma Key, but um, I was glad I spent the time to go get that, <laughs> finding Edge there. Um, yeah, that, that was a big a big difference um, but between you and Wind Foxes. He did not end up going to the cave early. Is that something you usually prefer to do when you have a hook in the early game? I, I try to avoid it unless I've got exit somehow. Uh, and I mean, there was Zot. I knew I'd get characters out of there, but... Uh, what i had um uh nobody's super strong early S sid sid edward uh yang and then there was a porum i could pick up in uh baron so i'm like so please give me some help here <laughs> paid off yeah, uh, absolutely. It was definitely a because uh, it's a long walk, right? You know, you yeah. can save scum it, but maybe you want to go ahead and, and get something from the shops. It, then you can't it's really a long save scum. walk. Yeah, the shops are shops can be good. So, mm -hmm. uh, talk to me about the decision to do, uh, and it worked out beautifully for you. It was a uh, one hundred percent the way to route the seed. Uh, talk to me about the decision to do so much of the underworld and the blue planet before going to the moon, because you got that darkness crystal pretty early from the freebie. Um, you see the free boss that's there in the Fey March, you have the tower key, but you also have an objective on the moon. What prompted your decision to go ahead and um, correctly uh, complete so much of the underworld and the blue planet before heading up to the moon? I mean, no pass, uh, for one. Um, and just a, getting under there, a lot of double checks. I mean, I had warp, so there were two from Dwarf Castle. I had the tower key and... You know, on the on the fall, seeing uh, Luge in his vanilla spot, which was going to be pretty easy, even though I didn't have a thunderclaw. Um, so yeah, just a lot of you know, I've got uh, I can't even remember where the darkness crystal was exactly. Like, it was the Fey March freebie. Fey March, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean the other two optional objectives and forge. I mean all key items. So. Um, don't want to didn't feel like i too often i've gone and found a haunted moon um which this one wasn't but um you know trying to get enough so i'm hopefully just making one trip up there which is ended up which is what ended up happening so yeah. well, another uh, question we had we were we're going through it the choice to use a siren with nine key items uh, was that an intentional choice, and what were you hoping to gain out of that? Just a, a couple more levels. I I saw. Um, I think it was actually at eight, because yeah, I think Sand Ruby and Spoon were the the two that I picked up to get me to ten. But uh, thought I would need a little help. If I have never gotten a Thor hammer before, mm -hmm. if I had known. <laughs> I mean, I saw the attack power on it. I'm like, that's that's odd. If I had known how hard Sid was going to start hitting, uh, I might not have done that. I might have just waited. But... Um, well, I, I think the trick is that you were you were worthy to pick it up, Bursic. <laughs> I think that's, that's the big thing there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of, uh, so I'm not gonna lie. Uh, uh, are you uh, are you newer to the community? No, I I think I've been running this since. Oh gosh, Moonblaze Wolf is the one who got me into it. Uh, oh okay, That's maybe like insane. maybe like 2018. Oh my I, goodness, okay. Uh, um, but I have not run. I haven't done much. I think the last tournament. I can't even remember the names. Um, maybe it was early 2021 and mm -hmm. i don't know somewhere over the pandemic just stepped away 
It fun. was whatever one uh, had like the magma route and the hook route as part of the um, as part of like the early stages, the pre bracket oh. stages. Like, oh, like, it, it, what was the chart? I think that I think that is that's before my time. That might have been ZZ three. That's ZZ three. You were talking yeah. to as three. as the person who was oh the uh, the winner of the hook two debacle. <laughs> it is forever ingrained in my mind. Well, that certainly explains um, how well you ran, uh, because uh, you just—it it was extremely clean from start to finish. Here's my 